I greet you brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus Christ. It is the 19th of April. Uh, it's just after 3.30 in the afternoon on this Sabbath day, the last Sabbath of the year. Yes, we're about to go into a new year on what I believe to be the true biblical calendar, the SMS Aries calendar. The sun is entering Aries and speaker uh, the star speaker has risen in the east, uh, Abib, originally known as Abib. And when we've got that situation, the, 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 uh, we are now in the month of Abib, when Abib is on the eastern horizon, speaker. The Latin word speaker means grain head, which is the same meaning for the, for the word Abib. So just, uh, yeah, so we're on the 19th, that's... That's the last Sabbath, and tomorrow the 20th is the that eclipse that everybody's talking about, the hybrid eclipse, uh, solar eclipse, and that will, will mark the conjunction of the sun and the moon, so there's no, no debate as to whether the sun and the moon are in conjunction on that day, and then after that it begins the new year, so... We'll be looking at uh, start of the year, new moon day on the 21st of April, and the first working day being the 22nd of April, with Passover being on the 4th of May, unleavened bread starting on the 5th of May, and I believe to be a very important date. But today, we're going to talk about chronology. We're not going to talk about calendars, I just wanted to show you where we are and uh, so getting into the chronology well what I'm gonna this is something that's that's really this is this is more light-hearted stuff um, the biblical chronology is really what I regard as something that it's is one of the foundation stones of the Bible it's something that we should all have been taught every Christian should understand biblical chronology unfortunately 99.9 percent .9 of the churches don't even know that there is such a thing as a biblical chronology They're not even aware of it which is very very unfortunate because without this biblical chronology we cannot understand uh, one of the most important prophecies in the bible and that is daniel's 70 weeks so what I want to look at today, and I have mentioned it in, before in, in my previous video, videos on Daniel 70 weeks, uh, I've touched on it briefly. Uh, to some extent I've gone into a little bit more detail uh, how the chronology relates to Daniel 70 weeks. But today, so this will be a video, it's, it's more along the lines of a book review. Uh, I, I want to uh, just introduce to you something that I, uh, this book that I discovered about six, almost seven years ago. And it's only really in the last two years or so become more, where I became more aware of the importance of this, uh, of this chronology, of this discovery. Uh, so I'm going to be referring to a book that was uh, written by Martin, Reverend Martin Anstey. It was published in 1913. So we have had a biblical chronology understanding of exactly when the events occurred uh, from a biblical perspective. So in other words, we know exactly when the flood occurred. We know exactly the year in which the exodus occurred. We know exactly when this uh, uh, Daniel received his prophecy of 70 weeks. We know exactly the year in which Jesus was born, baptized, and crucified, all because we've got a biblical chronology. Unfortunately, the majority of the world does not recognize it, has not aware, is not aware of it, has not picked up on it, and has based its studies on, uh, on a profane chronology, a worldly chrono chronology, a, chron a chronology that does not relate, does, is not in line, in sync with the biblical chronology. So we've had it for 110 years and 
in this 110 years, only a small handful of people actually know about it. So if you watch this video, you'll be amongst that very, very small group that is actually aware of, the, of, this, of this chronology. So if I can just, I'm, I'm hoping that this video will, will be able to make, will excite, uh, get, get, will, will get people excited about the accuracy of the biblical dates uh, throughout the Old Testament and how our Father has provided for us every bit of information that we needed to be able to complete the chronology all the way from Adam to the birth, baptism and crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's all there. We just had to find it. And this guy, Reverend Martin Ansley, as far as I'm aware, is the only person that has accurately completed the chronology. There have been many others, and he mentions them in, in detail, but there is always, there's always been a slight error here or there and something missing or something brought in from an external source. And what... Um, Reverend Martin Ansley did here was he, he combined a chronology that's in exclusively based on the scriptures. So what I've done is I've taken this, this is, the, there are two parts. This is a, a PDF of the original book. This is part one uh, or volume one of the book. There is, the, this gives the detail it's of of his um, of his study, a detailed description of of the chronology and how he came to uh, compile it. Uh, volume two is this, is goes hand in hand with it. This is a set of tables. Uh, so volume two, these are the chronolo chronological tables, and what he's done here is he set up. So from uh, from Adam in the year uh, in the year one, initially it's in, it goes up in in ten years, but later on his tables go up year by year. So he's compiled a table uh, with a date. He's he's has the the uh, uh, Ptolemaic date in it as well, the BC date, which is a Gregorian based date. And I'm going to show you, and he explains also in his word how how the our Potomi, uh, this Potomac date is a hundred is 82 years out. It's 82 years incorrect, uh, but he does put it in as a reference. And uh, so though these tables go on later on, these become a year on year. So uh, this is this is now uh, leading up to the flood. Sorry, this is sorry. This was just after the flood. The previous table was leading up to the flood. I'm just going to show you that. Okay, so um, that was uh, no, it was beyond the flood. So the first table uh, goes up to the Exodus. Yeah, up to the Exodus, and then table two is table two. Table two picks up where the previous table left off and it's from the exodus onwards uh, through to this would include the judges and then eventually the kings um, and um, jumping around a bit yeah these are the kings uh, we have kings for both uh, Israel Judah and Israel and then it goes on to the end of the kings would be uh, then there was the gentile period as well after the kings were complete there was this short period where, where gentile uh, the 70 years and it goes right up to the last bit of chronolog chronological data was just after the 70 years of, of exile into Bab Babylon uh, when, when Nehemiah uh, returns to Jerusalem after uh, the 70 years. The cr biblical chronology goes all the way uh, 
after the, uh, the, the 70 years of exile up to Nehemiah where he returns and Nehemiah returns to Jerusalem and that would be 3637 3, after Adam the, the only connection that we have to modern day times is that is Daniel's 70 weeks which would have kicked off in the first year of Cyrus so I think it's just up here there we go Cyrus yeah here we go. so Medes this was Darius for two years and then Cyrus became Saul king and then we've got the beginning of the 77s uh, the 490 years which starts in the first year of, of Cyrus in the year uh, 3589 anyway so then that 490 years takes us all, all the way through to the baptism of Christ and working backwards from his age of 30 at baptism we can determine his birth date and we can determine his crucifixion date three and a half years after his baptism so that's how the that's how we've got this um, chronology all the way through to modern times and we can complete from that point we, we've got the records to be able to complete it to today so these are the, the these tables um, I, 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 what I did was I imported them uh, uh, into an Excel spreadsheet just to make it a little bit easier and to be able to expand on them. Um, so I just want to show you that. So these are the exact same tables uh, imported into into Excel. Um, this this document is available uh, in um, on my hard drive. It can be viewed using uh, Google Sheets uh, I think I've got it open here so this is the same document uh, using Google Sheets so you don't need Excel to be able to view it uh, Google Sheets works just as well there might be one or two things that are a little bit different but by and large all the calculations and all that are it's all there I'm just going to use it's easier for me to to use the Excel version uh, so that's ex uh, so I just wanted to let you know that I'll provide a link in the in the description box for those that want to go into the detail so what I did was each of those tables are brought in this is the first table and then I've got the second table uh, that's uh, from from volume 2 from Anstey's uh, romance of biblical chronology I brought them all in and what I've done is I've been able to expand the number of I've add added columns so now I've got uh, the Gregorian actual Gregorian dates the true Gregorian date uh, against uh, the Ptolemic date uh, against Hebrew dates and then of course all the rest of the information is there as well um, so that's that's just broken up into the various tables uh, so on this table here we've got uh, this, the, the 70 years, the start of the first of the 70 years of exile uh, when, when Nebuchadnezzar uh, took Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and others was, uh, not everybody was exiled in exactly the same year. There were, there were several groups that were exiled over a period of time. But Daniel was amongst the first group that was was taken to Babylon so that's the beginning of the count of the 70 years of exile and so there's the end of the 70 years and this is when uh, Cyrus became sole king so there's uh, this was Darius the Mede co-governor with Cyrus for the first two years and then Cyrus became sole king and that would be the year where the decree was issued as well to rebuild Jerusalem so that takes us then you can take the 70 uh, the, the 77s the 490 years forward and that's basically what I've done here is I've just taken that all the way through um, to and this was the time where there was not no biblical chronology but what we know is that we know that on the 483rd year was up to Messiah and that was would have been when Jesus was baptized at age 30 so we can go backwards to his birth date and he would have been born in 2 BC and 
baptized at age 30 in 29 AD. Um, you'll see um, Ansley had it as 30, but he made the, um, the, there's a common error that most people make in jumping over from BC to AD. You must uh, deduct one year. So, uh, so it, anyway, it's, uh, I've got the count in here, so there's no count. There's, it's, you, can, you can verify the count for yourself. Uh, Jesus would have been baptized in 29 AD and then of course crucifixion would have been three and a, and a half three and a, around about three and a half years later in the in 33 AD and that would have been the midst of the last seven of the last week the midst of the last year so without biblical chronology what I'm what I'm really what this is all coming down to there is no way that we could complete this chronology without the foundation of knowing exactly when the 70 years started and ended and exactly when Cyrus, the king, became sole king. And that is the point of contention that, is, that, that has led um, many people astray and, and why so many dates are so screwed up uh, because they don't have a proper foundation. Anyway, so I've got this imported into Excel. It makes it a little bit easier to edit and maneuver around and to 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 verify the information, uh, and it's just a handy tool. I will make it available. But the foundation, still, the foundation was Ansley's tables, and then of course he's um, he's the description that goes along with it. So what I want to do now is just go into just give you a bit of background as to what Ansley actually did. Because this is very important. Um, what do you, the first thing we need to understand is that this chronology was entirely based on on the Bible. And uh, what I want to just go through is some of the the reviews. Uh, was, was just just to demonstrate to you what the foundation of the of the whole book is. So in the forward of of, of romance of Biblical chronology uh, by by Reverend uh, G. Campbell Morgan. He wrote yeah that he, and and I, I I couldn't put it better myself. So I just want to read through that. This is Bible study is the study of the Bible uh, where and there are many methods and departments, none without value. All of them, when done thoroughly, rather than superficially, tend to deepen tend to tend to the deepening of conviction as to the accuracy of the record. So in other words, the more we get into it and the more thorough we study the word, the more we get into it and not as opposed to a superficial glancing of it, the more we are convinced of the accuracy of the Bible. And that, that is exactly what happened here. And uh, unfortunately, many people glance over some of these dates and have, have missed some of the nuances and have come unstuck with at various points uh, in the in trying to to put a chronology together but Anstey pressed on and and uh, and he goes on to say to this work Mr Anstey has given himself a great with great care and much scholarship the results of a full uh, are full of uh, fascination and are almost startling in the revelation of the harmony of the of the bible scheme and the method has been that of independent study of the writings themselves with an open mind and determination to hide nothing and to explain nothing away and they, that was the key he wasn't prepared to just glance over anything or try to explain it away or try to alter anything uh, when it became a little bit um, difficult to get through a particular point in establishing the chronology instead he persevered so the careful and patient student is the only person who will be able to appreciate the, the value of this work and all such will come will come to this study with thankfulness to the author and I'm certainly one of them and having mindsets equally open and honest will be able to verify or correct in this in this process I, ve I venture to affirm that the corrections will be few and the verification will be constant and that is my 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 finding as well. Uh, there are one. There's just one place where I don't entirely agree with his conclusion, and that's right at the end. And that's that's regards the 
the 70 weeks, the 400, the meaning of the 480, uh, 483rd year versus um, the conclusion that Martin Ansley came to. And then of course there's, uh, there's one other, the, the, the 30 AD should have been 29 AD. But other than that, I've not been able to, and I've gone through this in detail, cross-referencing all the scriptures, etc. Uh, so I'm really excited to be able to share this with you. I believe it's a, it's a work, it's a solid piece of work that, that Martin's put together. Just something that Martin himself put, and this is his own preface, and I'd like to just read the two highlighted areas here. The studies embodied in the following pages have been undertaken with a view to ascertaining and exhibiting the exact chronological relation of every dated event recorded in the Old Testament. The object of the rite is the production of a standard chronology which shall accurately represent the exact date at which each event took place, so far as this can be ascertained from the statements contained in the text itself. And that's exactly what he did. He kept it to the text itself and, and, and excluded all other sources in determining the biblical chronology. Um, you can read through that section yourself, but I'll just go on to say that chronology, in his own words, is a branch of history. As such, it is governed by the laws that which determine the valid, validity of the result reached by the process of scientific investigation and historical inquiry. It is also a branch of applied mathematics, and mathematics is an exact science. In a truly scientific chronology, there is no room for any date which is not demonstrably true. So, the approach that Ansley took to establishing the chronology was that of a, the scientific approach, uh, being exact and accurate in his determination of each and every date and in understanding the text that led to that to uh, that provides each and every date in the chronology of the bible and so the, all credit goes to him he, he's been able to do what i would hasten to say nobody else has been able to do and i'm so thankful for the work that he's done because he's given a, me a solid reference uh, whenever i study the bible i can always go back and determine exactly what date the prophecy was given what date the what year the event took place and with, without um, any concern for the inaccuracy thereof knowing that it, our father that that date was provided for us by our father in heaven um, through his text okay so just pressing on a little bit with the book review i want to just show you briefly the, the contents uh, that we're going to work through uh, just to give you a bit of background, okay, we're going to touch on very, very briefly the scope, method, and standpoint and sources uh, that he that he used. Although his source was the Old Testament, it's just a review of some of the other areas where he he's, he's studied. He's done an immense amount of of study on all the various sources in by com for comparison and witness purposes only. These sources had zero zero effect zero adjustment um, but it was really just for comparative purposes uh, so we'll just have a look at some of those sources of those various texts and, and literature etc then we'll go into the actual chronology uh, where it starts off uh, in the pre-flood period the Adam to Noah period and then there's a there's a there's a bridge to be there's a connection to be determined there's the, the, the age of Noah at Shem's birth and then we'll then the next period was from Shem to Abraham there's also a connection there that had to be discovered uh, Terah's age at, at Adam's birth which is not 70 as most uh, to, uh, most people understand Abraham to be born when Terah was 70 no he was actually a hundred and 30 years old when Abraham was born and that's de determined that's proven in the text and then of course there's the um, the Hebrew um, patriarchs um, Abraham Isaac Jacob and Joseph uh, and there's another connection to be discovered there the time between Joseph's death and Moses's birth a connection 
in in the first section of 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 the of the biblical chronology in this video i don't think we're gonna we're not gonna get beyond i just want to get through this first connection and then i i'll i'll make an uh part uh, uh, the rest I'll, I'll probably break it up into uh, maybe three or maybe four videos i don't know we'll see how long each video gets to i don't want to make them too long but we'll we'll just get into the, the this uh, once we've looked at the the introduction got, once we've got past the introduction f uh, part of it we'll get into some of the actual chronology so in the later videos we'll look at the the theocracy the the exodus to samuel um, uh, section of the chronology and then after that we'll look at the the monarchies that's the kings so this is all the judges um, and and this would be the kings and then of course there's the gentile period after from cyrus through uh, forward we're not going to get in a lot of this is is um is extra biblical information i'm more concerned with the with the daniel 70 which which makes the connection through to the birth according uh, the the year in which jesus would have been born according to the daniel daniel's prophecy and that will be the conclusion of 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 the review so that just gives you an idea of where we're going to over the next couple of videos so without any further ado i want to get into we're going to now look into the other texts uh, the, some of the other uh, sources that were considered in in the process. So other texts, we uh, there's a few different. There's about two or three different ones. So the, the one I really want to just re uh, look at very briefly was the the Septuagint. This is um, uh, that's the that was the earliest uh, the original uh, translation of the Hebrew text uh, text to Greek. So it was pre pre. Uh, Jesus' time, uh, uh, so it was it was in the region around about 250 years before Christ. Uh, we'll call, call it about 200 years before Christ, uh, where uh, the the Bible was translated from the Hebrew into the Greek. Um, uh, so, Ansi's comment on this, I think, is uh, really sums it up, and I'll just read through the, that it was the work referring to the septic of that is work of a number of men who had none of the almost superstitious veneration of the letter for, for the letter of the scripture which char characterized the jewish palestinian um, a, a palestinian jew would never dare to add to or take uh, take from or alter a single letter of the original the translators of the Septuagint, on the contrary are notorious for their Hellenizing or modernizing tendencies. Their desire to simplify and to clear up difficulties, their practice of altering the text in order to remove what they regarded as apparent contradictions, and generally their endeavor to adapt their version to the prevailing notions of the age in such a way as to commend it in the learning and the culture of the time. So, in other words, this, the, the Septuagint is is full of alterations um, so it's unsuitable and there are many dates that they altered as well uh, and Ensti goes 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 into detail on that um, and as to why it, it's necessary to exclude the the, the Septuagint from a biblical chronology uh, perspective Okay, there's there were a few other texts as well, and he goes into detail. I'm not I'm not going to go into into detail on any of those. The other area is the ancient um, uh, sorry ancient ancient literature, which remains, in other words, extra biblical um, text uh, literature which exists, uh, which as as Anstey said, there's there's really very little information. Uh, from a chronology perspective certainly nothing as accurate and detailed as that which is provided in the old testament all the way from from adam's day there is no other document zero zippo nothing that provides the kind of detail uh, from a cr chronological perspective so there's not much in any of the other uh, ancient literature okay 
Um, so I want to get on to this is a very important section that I want to just touch on and that is the um, Ptolemy uh, chronology. Ptolemy was, uh, he lived in uh, 70 to uh, 161 AD. Uh, was a great constructive genius, according to Anstey. He was the author of the Ptolemaic system of astronomy. That was his main field of study. He was one of the founders, found, founders of the science of geography. But in chronology, he was, the, he was only a late compiler and a contriver, not an original witness and not a contemporary historian, for he lived in the second century after Christ. And he was the he, he is the only authority for the chronology of this period. He and he, but his work is not corroborate, corroborated. In other words, there are others like Josephus, etc., that that disagree with his chronology. Now his chronology is really comes down to the time period uh, from Cyrus to Alexander the Great. So from that's a time of uh, of, of the history where. There is great contention as to how long that period was, from Cyrus, uh, from Cyrus to Alexander. The, in other words, the time of uh, the Persian kings. According to Ptolemy uh, and his table that he established, it was a period of 207 years from Cyrus to Alexander the Great. 207 years. So in fact, it, well, it would be 205 if you discount the first two years where it was where Cyrus and um, Darius the Mede co co reigned. So this is a table you can find in in, uh, in various other places as well that was uh, published. Um, this is his Julian uh, dates BC, and um, so Ansi goes into some detail on that. And I think um, what we need to understand is where this this is where our our chronology uh, came apart. This was the stumbling block that caused us to be able to uh, adopt um, a chronology that was in error, as opposed to the biblical chronology. And I and I'll just I'm just going to take you through what Anstey has to say on the matter. He said in, in Ptolemy's table of Persian kings, all the Julian years uh, from um, Xerxes to Alexander the Great, inclusive, are co numerary Therefore, each requires to be raised a unit higher to give the Julian years in which their reigns began. Okay, that's just a bit of detail. All right, Ptolemy reckons by the vague Egyptian year of 365, the Julian year is exactly 365 and a quarter days. Had now, this is the important statement. Had Ptolemy never written profane chronology, in other words, non-biblical chronology, uh, profane chronology must have remained to this day in a state of ambiguity and confusion, utterly unintelligible and useless. Nor would it have been possible to have ascertained from the writings of the Greeks or from any other sources, except from the scripture itself, the true connection between sacred chronology and profane in any one single instance before the dissolution of the Persian Empire in the first year of Alexander the Great. Okay, so in other words, if it wasn't for Ptolemy, there would be no other way to make a connection between Cyrus's reign and Alexander, that time period. Without Ptolemy, there is nothing else. So as a result, the entire all, all biblical scholars and modern day chronologists all rely on Ptolemy's date. Goes on to, he goes on to say, and this is the most important statement of all, Ptolemy had no means of accurately determining, determining the chronology of this period. So he made the best use of material he had and contrived to make a chronology. He was a great astronomer and a great astrologer and a great geographer and a great constructor of uh, systematic systems, but he did not possess sufficient data to, to enable him to, fu to fill the gaps or to fix the dates of the chronology of this period. So he had to resort to the calculation of eclipses. 
And what has happened now is because that 207 years, that's um, 82 years longer than what it should be based on the Bible. So let's just carry on. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave this so you can read. Um, I wonder if I should just cover. Um, now, let me just read this part as well. In this way, then, uh, not only historical evidence of testimony, but by the method of ast astronomical calculation and the conject uh, conjectural identification of records with calculated eclipses, the chronology of this period of the world's history has been fixed by Ptolemy since then through uh, Eusebius and Jerome it has won its way to universal and ex universal acceptance and so it is to this day that the universal un that his the psalmist's uh, chronology is universally accepted and i see that even in you know i i, I always there have been well even in the most very recent past there have been videos where people have made reference to a specific date and or referred to the understanding of Daniel 70 weeks and trying to and, and uh, to to determine the beginning the the, the decree uh, you know because uh, you anyway, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself now all right let's complete this all right so we got this situation where Ptolemy has created a, a, a period for the Persian kings uh, let's read one there was no other ex uh, there was no other except that given in there was no other except that given in the prophecies of Daniel Hence, whilst the Potomac astro astro astronomy was overthrown by uh, Copernicus uh, in the 16th century, in other words, Ptolemy made some errors in his, astro astro um, in his calculations, in his astronomical uh, calculations, which were discovered in the 16th century. The reign of the Potomac chronology remains to this day. So in spite of those errors, there is one and only one alternative. The prophecy of Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27 fixes the period between the going forth of the command to return to build Jerusalem in the first year of Cyrus to the cutting of the Messiah in the year AD 30. And that should be AD 29. He made an error when jumping from um, AD, uh, from BC to AD. As a period of 480. 83 years. Now I believe that 483 years is not to the crucifixion but to the baptism. And that was the only area, two areas where I, I disagree with Anstey and his whole chronology and it does have an impact on the on the birth and death of, of, of Jesus. Um, and we can have a look at that much later on in the in the in the review. Uh, so if now this is this is an important so if this be the true chronology of the period in other words daniel's period of uh, of 483 years then if so if this be the true chronology of the period from the first year of cyrus to the crucifixion it leaves only 123 years instead of 205 you remember it was 207 in the table but you've got to take off the two years of corex and then you're left with 205 so instead of 205 given in Ptolemy's canon for the duration of the persian empire so in other words, from Cyrus. So you, in, according to Daniel's prophecy, Persian Empire, Cyrus to Exonagate, would be 123 years. According to, to Ptolemy, it's 205, a discrepancy or difference of 82 years. Consequently, the received or, or, or Ptolemic chronology now universally accepted must be abridged or adjusted by these 82 years. And that is the state of affairs even today right now people are still using Ptolemy's canon in determining uh, dates concerning these matters and there's an error of attitude here. so in my table that's why I have um, I have Gregorian dates and then we've got the Ptolemy dates so I've got them both uh, the Gregorian date is would be you'll see there's always a difference of 82 years between those two dates okay and that's the case right throughout uh, just for reference in that in those tables there okay um, so that's out of every of all the various pieces in the introduction and the other sources and that this is the most important part that I needed to cover 
Josephus also had a, had a, had a stab at uh, chronology and uh, I'll just read what Anstey has to say on the matter. He says, Josephus in his present state is a, is a mass of confusion. <laughs> so, yeah, Josephus from a, chronological, from a chronological perspective is not much of a, ref, a good reference and we'll just move on. Um, of course, you you know you guys can go and read. I really want to re highly recommend that you that you spend the time and go th through and read this in detail. It makes a very interesting reading in in most of the uh, sections. Okay, then the next section is ancient monuments. Um, these are stones and tablets and all these type of things that are. Um, I think uh, again, Anstey's wraps it up pretty nicely. He says the witnesses are extensively and numerous. And when they are right, correctly or rightly interpreted, they interpreted they may be regarded as authentic, though of course errors may be engraven upon the rock or written upon the ancient papyrus rolls quite as readily as upon he Hebrew manuscripts. So it really comes down to witness. Okay, um, who is the credible witness in these in these um, in these in the assessment or the determining of the chronology? Um, then of course there's classic literature, classic literature of the Greek and Roman. I'm not going to spend time on this. You can read it. Essentially, the beginning period. Um, and it was only after Alexander's uh, the Great going forward in the Greek uh, records that we've got proper uh, chronological records and of events. Uh, pre that, it's all based on myth and guesswork, and it's subject to a lot of uh, error so it's not not a lot there in us in it uh, it's, it makes for a good interesting read but I really came to the conclusion uh, having been through it that there really is nothing there's nothing in it they got they have no record they just contrived a whole lot of records um, to to be able to put something on the table so there's nothing in the Greek and Roman records for to help us in the situation okay then astronomical Observations and calculations. Again, I just want to refer to Anstey's uh, summary. I uh, just this section here, as he as he says, eclipses uh, can be calculated both backwards and forwards. They are uh, distinguished from each other by the time when uh, and and the place where they can be seen, the duration of the eclipse, and the quality of the number of digits is. Uh, um, uh, eclipsed, they have therefore been regarded as a means of correcting and determining the dates of events at which they have occurred, and the results thus obtained have been invest in invested with a kind of quasi infallibility. Uh, the date of our Lord's birth is fixed by means of an eclipse of the moon recorded by Josephus as having occurred shortly uh, before Herod's death. So, the problem with these things, yes, although we can calculate the actual occurrence of the event accurately uh, the, 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 the problem is identifying which one is the actual eclipse or uh, celestial, celestial event that actually matches with the event and he goes in to describe the eclipse of um, Thales uh, where there are five different dates given for the same uh, eclipse or, or that, that eclipse we know exactly when it was but it's associated with uh, different events. So, anyway, you can, well, let me put, let me put it to you this way: there were there were eclipses on each of these dates, and each one of these guys selected a different eclipse to associate with this eclipse of um, Thales, if that's pronounced correctly. Okay, so. So it will be seen from the above uh, error okay, that there are many sources of error which must be allowed for. Therefore, attaching uh, to the chronology uh, result arrived at the infallibility which belongs to the mathematical calculation. Okay, so the, the calculation is infallible, but selecting the correct one with the actual event is the, where the errors creep in. So there's, it's, it can cause quite a bit of havoc in, in chronology. Okay, then he covers in this ancient and modern chronologists, and he covers a tremendous amount of review work on on the modern chronologists, going into a fair amount of detail on some of them. Some of this he just touches on. It's it's quite a bit of reading there. Uh, I think that I'm I'm just going to press on from there. Um, 
before we get into the actual chronology, there's one last, just understanding the trustworthiness. Um, and this is really, this is about the witness. Okay, we, what, what's happening here is we are calling uh, other sources as an alternative witness against the Old Testament, the Hebrew Old Testament witness. Okay, so we've got one, we've got witnesses against each other. And the reader, therefore, or the person that's assessing the evidence uh, put forward by the various sources needs to be assessed and determined as to who, which is the credible witness. So that's your choice. Uh, I believe that the biblical scriptures are the true witness of these. And uh, yeah, so that's basically what he was saying, that the science of history stands upon a different basis from that of the science of nature. In all matters relating to the facts and events of past history, there is one and only one kind of proof possible, and that is not deductive proof, as in mathematics, and it is not in induce inductive proof of the kind which is admissible in natural science, but legal, uh, evidential, or historical proof, the kind required in a court of law. So in other words, bringing forth evidence uh, as a witness as one would in a court of law and then assessing the 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 the, the witness before you uh, as to determine the truth of the matter and that is the science of it all right so i think that pretty much brings me to the end of the introduction part of the of, of, of the biblical chronology by anstey now I want to get into the real stuff. That's that's the stuff that really excites me the most, and that is the actual biblical chronology. Um, getting into and this is this is going to be spread over maybe two or three videos where we're going to get into the actual scriptures and look at how the Lord has actually provided for us this information, um, how He's actually given us in in all different formats, but nevertheless, it's all there. So the beginning, so the first part of it, we're going to just cover the time from Adam to Noah up to the flood. That's the first section. Um, and in Anstey's book, when he starts off this section, he obviously starts in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verses 1. And then he gets into the a little bit of a debate outside of chronology which is a very interesting debate and in that what whether this world was created in chapter one or whether there was a creation before whether the actual creation comes later in in, uh, in chapters two and three and it all comes down to this one word where uh, where did the earth become a ruin um, and a desolation, which implies that there was something already beforehand. It became a ruin and desolation, and now this was that the creation event described thereafter is actually a restoration uh, event rather than a, a creation from scratch, and that there was some, there was a world before our world. Now, those of us that have been part of Ministry Revealed and, and Alan's teachings, we will know that we have come to the understanding based on scriptural evidence that there were in fact three periods uh, and I'll get into that now what Anstey interestingly argues along the same uh, argues along the line that there was a pre-world another that this was a restoration effect um, and that's what he really goes into a tremendous amount of detail in this section of, of, of the book uh, the, the crux of it is that the earth became a ruin and desolation as opposed to God created a ruin and desolation. So he, he, he basically fixed that up. And, and it's a really interesting section to go and read, uh, get into. It does fall a little bit out of the chronology because the chronology really starts from Adam. So from the point where Adam was uh, created. So that's where, uh, so in Genesis, uh, so that's where we, 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 we would start the, the so all, Chronological um, dates would be at home at uh, from from Adam. Um, just on that, 
Maybe I should just have a look at, uh, uh, on this on this matter. So uh, for those of us in ministry will will be aware, but those that are not, and you, if you are interested in understanding uh, the detail of this particular aspect, then I'd I'd highly recommend that you watch a video um, by Alan that Alan at Ministry Reveal did. It's called The Beginning, The Light, The Flesh. Uh, and it goes into detail how we are now in this, that, in other words, it's three sets of 7,000 years. It was 7,000 years, the light creation, 7,000 years, sorry, 7,000 years in the beginning, 7,000 years, the light creation, and then 7,000 years, which, we, which is the where we are at now, the flesh creation. And Alan goes into a lot of detail on these three periods and how it relates to uh, how we can determine that from current from the scripture before us so i'd I very much I'd, I'd, if you want to get into that and what i'm really saying is Anstey's kind of agreeing that with this maybe not the same detail but that there was a, a world before the current world would, uh, that we're in now so have a look at that if you're interested in getting into some detail on that uh, there's one other video that he also did, but I think this is the main one. Um, there was one that relates to it. So let me just see if I can find it. It was called, it's a fractal. Um, it's also in here. It's called in a, in that same time period. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Um... Yeah, this one, yeah, it's a fractal. That was just before, uh, this is the one that was in the beginning, light, and then this one was a little bit earlier, but both of them relate to that subject. Anyway. Okay, so getting back to Anstey's uh, chronology, I think that we can just conclude what did I want to um, All right, let's just, uh, let's just read his, his summary of that particular subject. Uh, what follows in Genesis 1, 3 to 31 is the story of the restoration of the lost order by the creative word of God uh, between the creation of the heavens and the earth in the beginning, Genesis 1, 1, and the catastrophe by which they became a ruin and a desolation, Genesis 1, 2. We place those countless ages, in other words, he's saying in that time period between the catastrophe and 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 the and the where it became a ruin and Genesis one to where he's now restoring it, he ascribes the countless ages required by geologists for the formation of the various stru uh, stru uh, strata of the Earth's crust and the fossil remains embedded therein. Okay, so he's just saying, uh, you know, that that could that pre-world could explain uh, some of the geological evidence that we're seeing on the ground. Uh, that's it. Um, okay, I think that's. I want to get into. Okay, this is now we're going to get into. So now he gets into. Okay, so we we out we passed the <laughs> that sort of introductory phase of two possible worlds, but we're in the creation part. But from a, a chronology perspective, Genesis gives it to us very relatively well. Actually, totally straightforward. We've got each father and age at which his son was born and how long he lived for. So you don't have to be a genius uh, to be able to work out exactly when the flood occurred. Okay, so that's all there for us. At the flood occurred at exactly 1,656 years, years after Adam. And you can determine that from the book of Genesis. Uh, very straightforward. The problem comes in later on when we have to when we got some gaps to deal with. So let's just see what Ernst has to say. The design of this uh, of this ge genealogy list is to give a chronology of the period of uh, a period from Adam to the flood. The line chosen is the line of Noah, the preserver of the race, the line of the promised Messiah, the redeemer of the race. It is. Uh, it, it must not be assumed that the son named in each generation is 
either always or generally the oldest son of, of his father. So this is not stated and it is not suggested and, and is not implied. Certainly, it goes on to say, certainly Seth is not the eldest son of Adam, nor, it, sorry, nor is Shem the, 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 the eldest son of Noah, though he is mentioned in this list. Uh, Genesis 5.32 uh, before his, so although he's mentioned in this list, uh, before his oldest brother Japheth, Moses selects from the geneal genealogical family records only those entries which relate to the chosen people and those uh, other races who are brought into contact with them in the course of their later uh, of the later history. The line of Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Is selected because to them is given the promise of the seed in whom all the nations of the earth are to be blessed the theme of the old testament is the redeemer all its selections are governed and all its omissions are explained by this fact so all the selection of who which dates were given and all all the omissions are explained by the fact that the redeemer Testament of the Redeemer is the thread, the golden thread throughout the the, the Old, Old Testament. Um, so I think we can go on to. Uh, okay, so that's so we know when the flood occurred. Now we've got the first uh, connection, and this is really a little bit of an introduction to the actual problem of the connections. Of which there are five uh, we're certainly not going to have time to go into the detail of all five but we're going to deal with the first connection in other words what happens is the bible doesn't give it uh, straightforward uh, the first up to the flood and up to noah uh, it gives it the, the chronology is very straightforward uh, the problem is that we don't know exactly when um, how old noah was when shem was born uh, so we have to and that's what the, so that's the first problem so the, and then there was another there's another problem later on we don't know how old um, uh, Terah was when Abraham was born and we don't know how old uh, we don't know the time period between Joseph's uh, death and Moses' birth so these are connections that we have to through by means of strip, scriptural study and scriptural analysis we have to uh, bridge these connections um, and then, of course, the last, the next one is Jose, uh, the connection. There's a period between Joshua uh, to the judges, so where Joshua comes to an end and the judges take over, and then later on between Eli and Saul. And then the one that's not listed here is, of course, the connection between the end of chronology in the Bible through to the uh, modern day chronology, the time when Jesus, um, the arrival of our Messiah. So. So, the chronology, the early chronology. I'll just read you. I'll just read you from uh, uh, um, what Ernst had to say. So, the the early chronology of the Hebrew Scriptures is contained in a series co of connected statements, each covering a, a definite period. Between each of the of these determined periods, in an apparent uh, ch uh, chasm or want of connection. A closer and more attentive study reveals the fact that the connecting link between the several periods is always supplied, but it has to be diligently sought for, uh, and that's where a lot of people came unstuck. They didn't diligently seek, seek for those connections, and the the five apparent um, chasms at which the continuity of the chronology, chronolo chronological record appears to be broken off. Are as follows, and then he lists them. Okay, and I've already covered them. So those are connections that need to be dealt with. And what we're going to do is just have a look now at the first one. Is the Noah? Uh, have I got a link to it? Uh, where is it? Yeah. Okay. So this is this will be the last section of, of that we're going to just read. This is the actual connection. Uh, we Ernst goes on to say we arrive at the age of Noah at Shem uh, at the birth of Shem by means of an induction from the facts contained in Genesis 7 verse 6 and Genesis 11 verse 10 
From Genesis 7 verse 6, we learn that Noah was 600 years old at the epoch of the flood. From Genesis 11:10, we learn that Shem was 100 years old, two years, 100 years, two years after the flood. Therefore, Shem was 98 years old at the time of the flood. That is, Shem was 98 years old when Noah was 600. Therefore, Shem was born when Noah was 502 years old. So there's our connection now. We've got a date at which Shem, and then later on we will, there are further connections from Shem to his sons, etc., which will conclude. And that, that'll be the next part. He's, he goes on to say, he enables, uh, this enables us to connect knowledge due to the anti uh, diluvian patriarchs uh, with, the, with the chronology of the post diluvian patriarchs, as we may proceed in either of two ways. Okay, in other words, the two ways that we will see later in the next video, uh, how we can move on from Shem, uh, and the chronology moves on to uh, to to Abraham, and eventually his son Isaac, Jacob, through Joseph uh, to Moses. Well, I. Uh, uh, I kind of stumbled my way through that a little bit. Um, I hope that being of you found that interesting. I will provide the links uh, to this book, uh, both volume one and volume two, in the description below. I'll also provide a link uh, to the uh, Excel spreadsheet. It'll be uh, uploaded in Excel format, but if you double click on it, uh, you can it op it does open up. If you go to, if you double click on this, uh, uh, well, if you open it up, it'll, it should, in fact, um, so it's in my uh, the study battle. When you double, when you open this book, it can be opened in in Google Sheets with no problems. Uh, so and then and then you can browse through that. Uh, you will see this might be a little confusion. I just want to mention it uh, because some. Uh, some might get a little bit stumped. I added another three columns on on the first page of this of this file, and that's where I brought in a comparison of jubilees. Uh, the book of jubilees gives us a whole lot of dates, and I wanted to compare that to the biblical chronology. And what I discovered was that they don't entirely match. They match for the first five up to up to Enoch. Uh, suddenly, when Enoch comes into the picture, there's a 100-year difference between the biblical chronology and and that of Jubilees. Uh, that increases through to increases to around about 355-year difference, uh, and then it and then it gets smaller again and back to around about at the end, uh, which is Jubilees ends at the Exodus, uh, at the end. Uh, and then it's uh, uh, yeah. So Jubilees ends at the at the Exodus, and uh, so when you compare the the Exodus story and later the the entry into the Promised Land, uh, you will find that there's again about a hundred year difference between between the two. I would suggest that um, I, I believe that the Book of Jubilee dates were tampered with; uh, they they were altered. And the somebody tried to the the, the attempt here. The, the reason for alteration was they wanted to uh, bring the death of Moses and the entry into the Promised Land at the end of the fiftieth Jubilee. Exactly. That's how. That's how Jubilees describes it, that to the year they entered into the Promised Land at the end of the 50th Jubilee, which is not in line with what the Biblical chronology is. And I think that and that difference is, a, is exactly 103 years. In other words, the, uh, they entered into the Promised Land 103 years after the 50th, the end of the 50th Jubilee, according to the Biblical chronology. And so I think that was the reason for the adjustment that were made. And uh, 
so that'll be another video some other time if we have time uh, but it's interesting just to be, uh, just to be able to compare the books I believe that the biblical chronology is the one to work with uh, it spans a number of books it spans the the, the details and uh, that we will see later on there's a lot of cross-referencing and a lot of verification and self evident that uh, there are, where there are multiple ways to uh, to arrive at the same dates so which which proves that there was no tampering with the dates in the Hebrew text of the Old Testament Testament so with that I uh, get stuck into biblical chronology and once once you've got a foundation um, and you can want, uh, and with this foundation we can uh, we can understand Daniel's uh, 70 weeks correctly it's the only way to be able to understand Daniel's 70 weeks if you have the true chronology because then you know that Cyrus's decree was the decree that was the trigger um, I've covered that before in in my previous videos uh, concerning Daniel's 70 weeks and uh, that's uh, where I'm going to to leave it for now so with that I'm going to sign out